Hello, I'm Ruby Lopez. And I'm Brendan Moran. Welcome to Creek Currents. Today, I get the lowdown on the fastest growing sport in the country, pickleball. Plus, see how New York artist Portia Munson has transformed the Bedford Gallery. But first, what's it take to keep the Walnut Creek watershed beautiful and healthy? Just ask the friends of the creeks. Hey, I'm Brandon Moran for Creek Currents. Today I'm at Las Trampas Creek where a team of volunteers is clearing out the Arundo. And if you're not sure what Arundo is, it's the giant bamboo corn grass stuff right behind me. Let's get to work. I'm here with Leslie Hunt. She's with Friends of the Creeks. Leslie, what are we doing today? We're taking Arundo out of the creek, Brendan. It's the most invasive plant we've got in the creek channels around here, in fact, everywhere in California. It takes away habitat because nothing can grow in it, uh, nothing can live in it, uh, and so every bit of wildlife in the creek is affected, and of course it blocks the view of the water. So the people on the banks aren't getting anything out of the creek either mm -hmm. when we've got a rundo. It is very hard to kill. It takes us several passes. Uh, we'll get about two-thirds of it the first time and then we'll, we'll make another pass and then a third one and we hope by then it's more or less gone. We can dig out a small amount at the end if we have to, but you know, for large amounts that just isn't practical. Is it just a matter of cutting them with very large clippers and getting rid of it or do you have to get underneath and get the roots out or tell me about that? On the first passes it's clippers. Uh -huh. We cut about uh, a foot high so that there's still some left. We can see where we've been, what we've done. We cut it flat because the edges are sharp. Mm -hmm. And then we paint it with herbicide. Hmm. This is not a job that you can do without herbicide. We're all for IPM, but this is one job where it's not enough. So we use it. Uh, I was trained by the city to do it so that I can follow safety procedures and whatnot. So you've got people out here that are on a Friday, they're volunteering, right? Why is that important? Yeah, you know, it's really important to get people out here and in touch with the watershed and reconnect with nature mm -hmm. and to kind of understand that we can make it better and we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though we have problems and environmental issues, um, you know, we can make those, we could take actions every day, small actions to yeah. make it better for everyone. Because a lot of this is, you know, if you don't come down here, you may not even know that this would be an issue, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, things like Arundo, you know, habitat problems mm -hmm. associated with that. But you know, also looking down at all the trash, you know, you don't really understand. There's really no way the trash doesn't go away. Right. Um, so a lot of it can end up in our creeks and then in the bay and the ocean. I'm here with Mike Ancio, he's a volunteer. And Mike, you're kind of in charge of helping find all this stuff, right? Yeah, I, uh, I was asked by a friend if I could uh, help find this stuff. Because mm -hmm. if you look back here, it's pretty obvious if you're standing on the creek bank yeah. what a runda looks like. Yeah. But there's about 300 miles of creek in the, in the Walnut Creek watershed. And you can't just walk along 300 miles. It's on private property and under trees and all sorts of uh -huh. stuff. So we're trying to brainstorm ways to do that. And what we found is if you look at aerial imagery, sort of like Google Maps aerial imagery, you can fly over and you can see a lot of the Sarundo. It sort of sticks out into the creek and you can see the, the fingers out there. So um, we created a map that, um, that shows where a lot of the patches are. So you're just spending time looking at a computer screen, clicking around and flying around like as if you're on Google Maps. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of a game at first. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you go through and you fly over and say, oh, that looks a lot like a rundo, and then draw a little polygon around it. So you can say that's a patch of a rundo or might be a patch. Right. And then you actually have to go look at it to see if it is a patch. And what we find is that most of the time, if we find, if we see it from the sky, it's a patch. And there's also some more of it around there. So it's a really good start. And right. like I said, we found two to 300 patches so far.
I'm here with Sean Cochran. He's with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And Sean's going to talk to us about what Arundo does to the fish. Sure. Um, so Arundo, um, as you can see, um, it's a perennial grass. It was originally brought here um, as a method for essentially preventing, preventing erosion. It's a hydrophyte, so it grows in riparian areas. It's planted a lot along stream quarters, uh, canals, and levees. It was quite effective at stabilizing erosion problems, but as you can see, it's become quite a pervasive and invasive issue here in California. Um, it actually, what makes it such a pervasive and invasive is it is it the method by which it grows. It spreads very rapidly. Um, so once a plant becomes established, it very quickly becomes a, can form a dense stand of many different stalks of Arundo, essentially smothering out native riparian vegetation. As far as fish and wildlife versus native riparian vegetation, it's much lower habitat quality mm -hmm. um, for terrestrial um, species that utilize riparian areas. And then for fish, the main issues really are is that it obviously is a vertical plant. It doesn't provide the shading benefits that kind of cool stream temperatures like native um, riparian vegetation does. Um, also, one of the other um, issues is that it's a very um, water thirsty plant. Mm -hmm. So it has very deep tap roots and, and sit in kind of central California stream systems where we have low summer stream flows it can actually exacerbate the low stream flow issues, making it kind of a little bit more stressful for our native fish species. And right now, we're on somebody's property, right? We are. This is private property, and that is unusual for us, but we would like it to become much more a common thing. Most of the creek is owned by private property owners, and if we're going to be successful in eradicating the window, then we need to get them to buy in. And we can train them how to get it off their own property, uh, sometimes we can come and help them get rid of it, um, but you know, the more we get, the more gets replanted with native creek vegetation, the better the creek's going to look, the better it will support wildlife, the greener we'll all be. Friends of the Creeks has volunteer projects year-round that only require two to three hours of your time. Head on over to their website for more information. And you know, the Bedford Gallery's current exhibit also speaks to environmentalism from a very unique perspective. Check it out. I'm Portia Munson and the name of my show is Her Room, Her World. And the show is centered around a pink project bedroom which is a large, full-size constructed bedroom in the center of the gallery. So I think of myself as both an environmentalist and a feminist, and I feel like the work that I'm doing with the gathering of the pink objects or other kinds of objects is I'm just sort of reflecting on the culture. I've gathered the pink objects from thrift shops and yard sales all over the country and pulled them together to use all these objects to make the bedroom pink. I'm kind of making like almost like shrines to pink, little altars to femininity. So the walls are all covered with dresses and the ceiling is all covered with baby onesies and hundreds of shoes are on the floor and then different pink things are on the surfaces. So for this exhibition I'm showing about 30 prints of birds and small creatures. They're all printed the size that the creatures or birds actually are, and I scan them at a high resolution on a scanner. The flowers are gathered and put together around the bird on the same day that I found that bird. I think of them as kind of memento mori, honoring the bird or creature. I created this dandelion wallpaper. It's a single dandelion mandala that's repeated across the wall. There's a lot of pesticides that are used to try to make perfect lawns. You know, if we're trying to kill that, we're ultimately killing these beautiful creatures and, you know, it has a negative effect on us as well. The slideshow piece is called The Contents of a Whale's Belly. That's an accumulation of hundreds of scanned images of individual mundane objects. And I've just scanned one after the other and then put them into this slideshow. And again, it's sort of trying to 
help us think about all these different little mundane plastic objects that we use. I think of each one of those objects in the contents of a whale's belly as each one stands in for the thousands of others that are just like it, that are out there in the world or in the oceans. And I also really like to imagine the end of plastic and that right now we're living in the plastic age. I think we're going to realize that it's contaminating us because it stays. That's one current that I hope can be sort of thought about. I'm hoping that the people who come and see this exhibition and see the pink bedroom have sort of a second look at the color pink. There was something very empowering about collecting all of this pink stuff together that might normally, when you see one pale pink object, it's very maybe passive and sort of soft. And then there's something about gathering it all together, all these different objects that are mundane, mass-produced objects that has the opposite of effect, where it feels quite powerful and quite empowering. And I hope that my room and that work has that effect, and you put it all together, and it's really, really powerful. Pro tip for visiting the Bedford Ruby, first Tuesdays of every month are free. So head on over to check out their latest exhibit. You know what? You're not the only one with some pro tips. Check out the new moves I learned from Arts and Rec. here at Red Gear Park and we have exciting news for all of you pickleball fans and right now I'm joined by Isabella who is a general manager for Lifetime Activities to tell us all about that exciting news, right? So recently we converted the multi-use court into four dedicated pickleball courts. In addition to that, that's here at Red Gear Park. In addition to that, at Heather Farm we're adding two new pickleball courts with lights and an additional tennis court. So you know, lots more resources coming for the community and that's really exciting. That is exciting. Mm -hmm. It seems like you have a really great following. There are quite mm -hmm. a bit of pickleball players here behind us and playing right now, so it's pretty popular. Yes, definitely. It's a, it's a fast-growing sport and members of the community are very excited about it. So this will be, a, you know, definitely a great resource that's available to players of all ages and all abilities. Okay, now, can people take lessons? Can they stop by here anytime? How does it work? So there is drop-in here at Red Gear Park, but also there are lessons available. If, if you know, you'd like more information on that, I can give you our website. It's www.lifetimeactivities.com. Okay. You can also give us a call in the office, 925-945-0105. Okay, and now what if, what if I'm interested in a lesson right now? Well, guess what? I have a coach out here for you. Why don't we go over and meet Coach Holly? All right, thanks, Isabella. Now I'm joined by Senior Director of Activities for Lifetime Activities, aka Coach Ali. Now, Coach, other than pickleball being really fun to say, right? I mean, I really don't know much about it. So can you give me give me the lowdown? How tell me about the game and why is it so fun? This game is fun because it's really easy to learn how to play. It's really easy to start rallying. Mm -hmm. It lets you work on soft shots, it lets you work on hard shots. People have fun playing, people get a great workout, and all those reasons are reasons why this sport is really just catching on everywhere, especially in Walnut Creek. I'm watching people play out here, it's a pretty fierce competition, but as I watch, it kind of reminds me of two different sports, like tennis and ping pong. You're absolutely right. Pickleball has tennis elements integrated into the game. It has ping pong elements integrated in the game. Having backgrounds in those sports absolutely helps you play pickleball more easily, but you don't need a paddle or racket sport background to enjoy this sport. I know plenty of people who have started playing with no racket or paddle background and have really elevated their games to a high level because it's so much fun, because they play a bunch. And I have to ask, pickleball, I mean, where did the name come from? Oh, legend, legend states that um, when this game was starting in the Pacific Northwest, the, the, the founding fathers of the game, so to speak, had a dog hanging around named Pickle, and while they were playing the sport, this ball would run around 
Hence the name, pickleball. Now the fun part, the pickleball lesson, right? We're gonna get to it. We're gonna start with a shot called the dink, and in just a few minutes, you're gonna be surprised. You will be playing pickleball. I'll be playing pickleball. Yes. I'm pretty bad at racket sports. Don't even worry. All right. You're gonna have fun, I promise. Okay. Let's set up on the other side of the net for me. Now this is called a dink. We're working on a shot okay. called the dink. I want okay. you standing behind this white line, right. and um, the, the space between this white line and the net, we're gonna call the kitchen. Okay. You need to step into the kitchen, do it, but after you hit that shot, step back out. Okay. I'll tell you why in just a minute. Barely get the ball over the net. There you go, nice try, try it again. Really soft. Pretend it's an egg that you don't want to break. There you go. Good try, keep going, all right? Now, do you want to hit it this way? You can hit forehand? it with a forehand or a backhand, okay. absolutely. Nice soft shot. There you go, excellent. Keep it soft, good. Okay. If you need to get closer to that ball, just like I did, you can take a step uh. in. Do you step over when you, is it called serving? Well, we're not no. really serving. Here's the okay. deal. You Just, can step in if a ball bounces. The okay. rules of the sport stay, state that you can't ever step in if you're playing an unbounced ball. Okay. Oh, so, okay. so as okay. long as the ball is bouncing, you can come on in and hit it. Okay. okay. See, I hit that ball with no bounce, but I wasn't in the kitchen, so that's okay. okay. Here we go. Hitting it really softly. There you go. Good shot, Ruby. Keep it up. Excellent shot, Ruby. You're hitting. You're hitting good shots, right. we're rallying, we're having fun. How long have you been playing? Oh, about one minute. Wow, <laughs> I can't believe it. Look at this. Do you know that if we were on a tennis court, oh, I would be happy with a three-shot rally by the end of the All lesson. All right, I'll take it. Okay. Okay, did you, did you see how I stepped in? Yes. To hit that ball, that's against the rules. Oh, okay. If I'm hitting it without a bounce, I have to stay out of the kitchen. I like the flexibility of the bouncing and the not bouncing though. Yeah, and like I said, if it's no bounce, do it all you want, but you have to be behind that line. Okay. Okay. Why don't we work on hitting shots right at each other? Okay. We're gonna call this driving the ball. And okay. as a warm up here, I want you to execute what we call a clap catch. So I'm gonna hit it kind of, I want you, I'm gonna aim for your chest, you're gonna okay. aim for mine, and just kind of bring your hand and the ball together. Okay. Or bring your hand and the paddle together, I should say. Try to catch this ball. Nice job, bring it right back at me. Okay. Whoop. Good try. A little harder. So swing. Try Under. not to try not to swing down on the ball. Try to swing sideways on the ball. Here we go. Okay. There you go. Good. Oh. Nice try. Nice try. It's all right. Guess what? We have way more where that came from. Are you ready? Try it again. Bring it right at me. Okay. There you go. So Good job. What is, the, is there a trick to like well, aiming? It, what I'm gonna okay. Do now. Okay. Okay. So here's what I'm gonna do now. Now I'm gonna rapid fire some shots at you, and I want to see how many you can. Get okay. that. So think of these as bullets that you don't want hitting your body <laughs> and hurting you, okay? Ready? I definitely don't you, want you that. You can do it. Okay. Go. Good, go. Good, go. Here comes the next one. Awesome, oh. go. Oh, good, go. Nice, pretty good. <laughs> you want to try some backhands now? So the shot sure. you've been sure. hitting mostly has been on the right side of your body. Okay. We, we define that as a forehand. Okay. We're going to work the backhand, okay? okay. Ready? Sure. Rapid fire, here it comes. Go. Oh. Nice try, go. Good, oh, go. Everybody, look out. Good job, it's all right, it's all right. Here we go, go. Nice, go. Oh. Okay, one more, ready? Go. That was a nice one. Okay. All right, what do you think? Oh. Okay, so just so you know, okay, <laughs> just so you know, when you're at the kitchen, the safest shot, the most aggressive shot to hit okay. are those dinks that we started with. Okay. Because you hit them, and if you hit a really good one, you really only have to worry about the dink coming back. Okay. If you hit a ball a little high, what you're running the risk of is what we call the fast game, okay. which is kind of this pickleball going back and forth really fast, mm -hmm. maybe faster than you can handle. Okay. Coach Ali, thanks so much. Pickleball high five. Right. Great job. Thank you. such a great time you're learning all about pickleball. I think I found my new sport. Now if you'd like some more information to all the recreational activities available to you here in Walnut Creek, visit walnutcreekrec.org and we'll see you next time. Somebody has been practicing their pickleball. You know, it was a lot of fun. I should take it out myself. Yes, and it's great exercise. And finally, we'll leave you with a look at all of the other amazing programming from Walnut Creek Arts and Rec. And we'll see you next time on Creek Currents.